welcome to Recap King. In this video, we will explain a Chinese fantasy film released in 2021 titled The Yin Yang Master. This movie tells the story of a half-human half-demon who had to fight to clear his name of a murder he didn't commit. Will he be able to save humanity from the destruction caused by the Demon King's attack? Let's find out in The Yin Yang Master. The Yin Yang Master begins when a man named King Ming, an officer of the Yin Yang Bureau, is accused of murdering his comrades. The accusation was strengthened because King Ming possessed the rarest bloodlines, namely half-human and half-demon. Feeling cornered, King Ming decided to escape with a teleportation move. Not long after that, one of his colleagues, a woman named Bai Nai, came to the crime scene and was shocked to learn that her comrades had been killed. However, Bai Nai didn't necessarily believe that King Ming had killed them all because she believed that King Ming had a good heart, despite his background as a half-human half-demon. Seven years later, a royal guard captain named Yuan Boye is assigned to deliver a tribute to the capital. When the captain and his troops passed in the middle of the forest, they were confronted by a mysterious creature. Yuan Boye immediately intervened to face the creature. It turns out that this creature is a disguise from three badger demons who are quite good at self-defense. Just as Yuan Boya was about to defeat the demons, King Ming appeared and could easily take down Yuan Boya. After that, he ordered the demons to transport all the valuables that Yuan Boya wanted to send to the capital. Before leaving, King Ming gave him a slip of spell paper as a souvenir. After escaping from the Yin Yang Bureau seven years ago, King Ming decided to start a new life and live between the human world and the demon world. At that place, King Ming cared for and trained a team of demons. Meanwhile at the Yin Yang Bureau, two demons sneak in there and cast a spell on one of the guards to attack the other guards. The demons did this on purpose to distract the other guards so they could easily infiltrate the special room where the scale stone was sealed. The two demons then cast a spell and managed to break the stone seal. Realizing that the commotion was just a distraction, Bai Nai, who was now the head of the Yin Yang Bureau, rushed to the sealing room of the scale stone and found the demon stealing the stone. Bai Nai immediately cast a sealing spell and managed to seal one of the demons, but the other demon managed to escape with the scale stone. Bai Nai rushed to grab her bow and arrow, intending to shoot at the demon who had fled quite a distance from there. Even so, with her ability and sharp eyesight, she managed to shoot an arrow right at its target. The demon immediately fell and the scale stone was thrown and fell near the three badger demons who were playing in the forest. Feeling curious about the mysterious red stone, one of the badger demons then took the stone and carried it away. When the troops from the Yin Yang Bureau arrived and were about to take the scale stone, one of the badger demons swallowed the stone and fell unconscious. His friends then brought the badger demon back to their headquarters to ask King Ming for help. On the other hand, the demon who stole the scale stone managed to escape from the Yin Yang Bureau troops and return to its base. The demon then reported the incident to his master, a female demon nicknamed the Snow Queen. Not far from the Snow Queen, there appears a mysterious figure dressed in all black and wearing a hood with a demon's hand. Because he failed in carrying out the mission, the Snow Queen then froze that demon and the mysterious figure then killed him. Meanwhile at the King Ming residence, the badger demons immediately explained to the man what had happened to their comrade using sign language. When King Ming inspected it, an evil aura seemed to emanate from the badger demon's body and King Ming heard whispers of something quite familiar to him because he had heard the same whispers when he was still at the Yin Yang Bureau. The whisper came from the demon king who often asked King Ming to free him. Knowing the great danger that would threaten the safety of the human world, King Ming then locked the badger demon in a place and sealed the place with a special spell. After that, he asked his subordinates, Peach Blossom Spirit and Butterfly Spirit to be on guard as he was going to the demon world. At the Yin Yang Bureau headquarters, Bai Nai and the higher-ups of the Yin Yang Bureau were having a meeting to discuss the theft of the scale stone that had just taken place. Some accused King Ming of being the robbery's mastermind, recalling the events seven years ago. Moreover, before King Ming and Bai Nai were very young and were students at the Yin Yang Bureau, King Ming had been involved in an incident where he suddenly went on a rampage and attacked an honor student named Si Mu, even though Si Mu could calm King Ming down with a special spell and didn't blame him for the incident. The higher-ups thought that King Ming was easily influenced by the Demon King whose soul was sealed within the scale stone intended to free the Demon King. Elsewhere, Yuan Boya reports the robbery he experienced in the forest to his superiors and intends to ask the Yin Yang Bureau for help because demons are involved in the robbery. However, his superiors scolded him and ordered him to compensate all losses within three days or the royal party confiscated his entire assets. Obviously Yuan Boya disagreed that he had to pay compensation because the robbery was not his fault. He finally decided to catch the robbers himself, even though he had to risk his own life. While looking for information about King Meng and his team of demons, Yuan Boya accidentally met a girl named Shenla who was also looking for King Meng. Yuan Boya and Shenla decided to travel together to the demon world and look for King Meng. Armed with King Meng's spell paper which Yuan Boya still kept and Shenla's unique abilities, 
The two were finally able to find a bridge that connected the human world and the demon world. Yuan Boya and Shenla finally meet King Ming in the demon world and it is revealed that Shenla's purpose of searching for King Ming was because she wanted to serve King Ming who had saved her and her family when the Yin Yang Bureau tried to kill them. King Ming, who had important business in the demon world, simply ignored the two of them. He then encountered one of the powerful demons in the demon world who kept the Tushin sword. King Ming intended to ask for the sword just if the Demon King did awaken because the Demon King could only be sealed with the Tushin sword. But because the Demon didn't want to just give up the sword, King Ming then offered Yuan Boya and Shenla to take part in the battle run by the Demon, where the other demons would risk their money in the fight. In this battle, Yuan Boya has to deal with a red-skinned stocky demon who will grow bigger if he gets an attack from all his opponents. Seeing Yuan Boya who seemed to be overwhelmed by the Demon, King Ming secretly helped him by making the Demon slip, so that he fell and hit his nose on the ground. It turned out that King Ming did that on purpose so that Yuan Boya would realize that the bulky demon's body would shrink if something hit his nose. When Yuan Boya managed to defeat the stocky demon and refused to kill him, he and Shenla met resistance from the demons. But then, the stocky demon helped Yuan Boya and Shenla against the demons. Elsewhere, King Ming, who was about to take Tushin's sword, was attacked by Bai Nai and also the Yin Yang Bureau troops who had surrounded the place. Bai Nai and King Ming engage in a battle using high-level magic in which Bai Nai asks him to return the Scale Stone. Even though King Ming had said that he didn't know about the Scale Stone's whereabouts, Bai Nai still attacked him, causing Tushin's sword to fall from his grip. However, Yuan Boya managed to get hold of the sword and used it against the demons. King Ming, Yuan Boya and Shenla were pushed onto the bridge and surrounded the demon forces and the Yin Yang Bureau. Just as the Yin Yang Bureau troops were about to attack King Ming with a fatal blow, Bai Nai suddenly came and protected him with a protective spell. But on the other hand, Bai Nai was seriously injured in the incident, so King Ming went berserk and attacked them all with his demon power. After that, King Ming made a portal with Bai Nai's wand to teleport to his residence followed by Yuan Boya, Shenla and the stocky demon. While treating Bai Nai's wound, King Ming found a bellflower bracelet in her pocket. He thought back to the past when Bai Nai gave the bracelet to him as a friendship gift because she was the only person in the Yin Yang Bureau who had never isolated King Ming, even openly befriended him even though he had demonic blood flowing inside him. At that time, King Ming promised never to betray Bai Nai and always protect her whenever and wherever. However, King Ming had to leave Bai Nai after being accused of killing his comrades. Not long after, Bai Nai woke up, but she drew her wand at King Ming because she still didn't fully trust him, remembering what he had done seven years ago. King Ming then told Bai Nai the chronology of the murder incident, where at that time King Ming, who was supposed to be in charge of guarding the scale stone with his colleagues, was replaced by Simu because of Simu's wish. Simu turned out to be worried about King Ming, easily influenced by the Demon King whose soul was sealed within the Scale Stone. Shortly after, King Ming sensed an extremely dense evil aura and immediately rushed into the sealing room of the Scale Stone. But upon arrival, he found his comrades dead and the seal of the Scale Stone broken. He then met the Snow Queen who was holding Simu hostage. Unexpectedly, the Snow Queen launched an attack on him while throwing Simu's body at him, so he accidentally crushed Simu's body and felt very guilty for killing one of the people who cared about him. After the attack, the Snow Queen fled and King Ming was eventually made a suspect for the massacre. And since then, he has been trying to find information about the Snow Queen to avenge the deaths of Simu and his companions. On the other hand, Yuan Boya instead broke the seal where King Ming held the badger demon possessed by an evil aura. The demon then went berserk and attacked Yuan Boya, but King Ming managed to stop him and was forced to kill him with the Tushin sword. In that instant, the badger demon's body shattered into pieces and turned into dust, giving rise to the scale stone that was previously swallowed by the demon. King Ming was shocked because it turned out that all this time the badger demon had swallowed the scale stone which was the vessel for the demon king's soul. Seeing this, Bai Nai immediately took the scale stone and became more and more convinced that the current King Ming was very different from the King Ming she used to know. However, when Bai Nai teleported back to Yin Yang Bureau, something strange happened. She then teleported to the middle of the bamboo forest instead. It turned out that the Snow Queen did this on purpose to trap Bai Nai and the Yin Yang Bureau's troops. The Snow Queen then appeared and froze the Yin Yang Bureau troops. Bai Nai and the Snow Queen were also involved in a fierce battle, but because Bai Nai's wounds had not yet fully healed, the Snow Queen could easily corner her. Just as the Snow Queen was about to kill Bai Nai, King Ming saved her. Knowing that King Ming wanted to take revenge on her, the Snow Queen challenged him to fight elsewhere, leaving Bai Nai who still kept the Scale Stone alone. Shortly after King Ming left, Bai Nai was approached by a mysterious person who turned out to be Si Mu, although his appearance was slightly different because he now had demon blood within him. Apparently, Simu had always been very jealous of King Ming who was half-human and half-demon and had ambitions to have a great power that exceeded the strength possessed by King Ming. It turned out that the one who freed the Snow Queen and unsealed the Scale Stone was Simu who intended to absorb the Demon King's soul. But as it turned out, 
The scale stone could only be used by someone who had demon blood within him. Simu almost died while holding the scale stone. Luckily, the Snow Queen instantly saved him by cutting his hand. After that, King Meng came to the scene and met the Snow Queen who had hidden Simu. The Snow Queen then threw the other person's corpse as she had turned into Simu's, then fled from there so that King Meng would be blamed for the incident. After revealing all that to Bai Nai, King Ming took the scale stone from her and absorbed its power. On the other hand, King Ming manages to defeat the Snow Queen and finds out that the mastermind behind the murder seven years ago was Simu. After obtaining the power of the scale stone, Simu then headed to the demon world and spread his evil aura throughout the world, subduing the demons to obey his orders and flocking to the human world to destroy mankind. Elsewhere, after learning that the demons were about to attack the human world, Yuan Boya, Shenla, and also King Ming's demons team, prepared to dispel the demons on the bridge so they couldn't cross into the human world. Meanwhile, King Ming finally meets Simu in the demon world and gets into a fight. When King Ming stabbed Simu with the Tushin sword, unexpectedly, the sword shattered and Simu was able to bring down King Ming. After that, Simu brought King Ming to the bridge between the human world and the demon world, where a battle was taking place between King Ming's demons team against the demons. Arriving at the bridge, Simu then dropped King Ming, who was already seriously injured, into the ravine below. Seeing that their master had been taken down, King Ming's demons team looked very sad. The demons assigned to destroy the bridge from below finally managed to make the bridge collapse almost completely, so that many demons fell into the abyss. The stocky demon whose body had become a giant sacrificed himself to completely destroy the bridge after saving Yuan Boya from the demons' attacks. Yuan Boya seemed very devastated by the departure of the stocky demon because he had a deep emotional bond with the stocky demon, where they eventually became close friends after escaping from the demon world some time ago. Not losing his mind, Simu put his hand on demons so that the demons could cross the side of the bridge that had collapsed. However, not long after, King Ming shot out as fast as lightning and slammed into Simu's demonic hand, sending it flying far away. After being knocked down by Simu, King Ming's appearance changed slightly, as he now had white hair and powerful qi energy. King Ming and Simu again engaged in a fierce duel, until King Ming managed to retrieve the scale stone, which then shattered Simu's body into dust. After that, the evil aura surrounding the demon world disappeared and the demons turned back to their normal state. Bai Nai, apparently still alive, rushed to the bridge and asked King Ming to hand over the scale stone. Unexpectedly, King Ming actually crushed the stone. Not only that, King Ming didn't even say anything and decided to stay in the demon world and leave Bai Nai and everyone who cared about him so much, forgetting all the good memories and the happy past with them. Bai Nai, Yuan Boya, Shenla, and also King Ming's demons team looked very sad and teary-eyed as King Ming ignored them and walked away, without saying a word as a farewell. It turned out that King Ming was forced to do all that because when he was at the end of his life, he got a whisper from the demon king who was trying to take over his body. King Ming then cast a spell to kill the demon king, albeit at the risk of himself being killed as well. Finally King Ming and the demon king made a deal in which he would absorb the demon king's power, but consequently, their souls would fuse and King Ming could become complete stealth. Not only that, he could no longer feel emotions or have any kind of bond with other people, so he was forced to leave his friends to protect them from the terrifying power of the Demon King within him. The film ends by showing Yuan Boya who is now respected because he is considered to have contributed to protecting the human world from the attacks of the demons. Yuan Boya finally reunited with Shenla and both of them looked happy. King Ming's demons team spreads all over the world and decides to stick to King Min's principle of wanting to protect humanity. Meanwhile, Bai Nai still faithfully awaits King Ming who might return one day. Despite being born a half-human half-demon, King Ming turns out to have a much greater kindness and concern for the safety of mankind than Simu, a full-fledged human. Even the teachings, advice, and principles that the King Ming taught others were still carried out even though the current King Ming could no longer gather with them. King Ming's sincere sacrifice will never be in vain and will always be remembered by those who care and love him for who he is.